Hello everyone, good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you are all having a blessed Saturday. Here's your fourth stimulus check update and daily news report. A bipartisan group of senators are working really hard to get President Joe Biden's infrastructure passed this weekend. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says, negotiations are going great. The two winners of this week's $75 Amazon gift card giveaway are Colleen Davis and Tony Pulverente. Congratulations to both of you. Next Friday, I will be giving away more $75 Amazon gift cards. Please enter the giveaway by subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and also leaving a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone. Nearly one month after a bipartisan group of senators announced a landmark infrastructure deal with the White House, to provide $579 billion of new funding for the nation's highways, ports, and rail lines, lawmakers will spend this weekend trying to answer a question that has vexed them from the start. The question is how to pay for it. Republicans have so far refused to raise any corporate or individual taxes to offset the new funding, which will be added to an existing transportation bill for a total of $1.2 trillion. The White House, in turn, has refused to impose user fees on the improved highways and rails. Without these reliable sources of funding available to them, the group of senators, which now numbers 22 and 11 from each party, is working to cobble together offsets from across the federal government. There is not an agreed upon plan for how to pay for the new spending. It was certainly not a final piece of legislation. But the fact that there is no legislation written yet is not stopping Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer from moving forward with the package. The New York Democrat revealed on Thursday that he plans to hold an initial litmus test vote next week on the House bill that will eventually contain the Senate's infrastructure legislation once it's agreed to. Define infrastructure. We have a bipartisan plan for physical infrastructure. That's the stuff that lays the foundation for a durable economy, roads, bridges, transit, rail, Amtrak. Build Back Better infrastructure also includes what I call human infrastructure. We're building affordable housing, free community college, a universal pre-K, paid leave. Can you imagine how much fun the press pool is having when they're traveling with POTUS? They know there will be ice cream. You know, they have to cover me wherever I travel, so at least I can do is make sure they get some ice cream when I get it. I don't have kids. Does the Build Back Better plan do anything for me? Yes, it does. First of all, it provides two years of free community college. It invests in high quality apprenticeship programs, training programs to create jobs and clean energy, and building plus retrofitting two million homes. These are things that are available to you to take advantage of and or to deal with in terms of being employed. When we talk about infrastructure, that must include public health. It's every bit as important as bridges, roads, trains, and plants. You're absolutely right. This bipartisan infrastructure deal is the largest investment in clean drinking water in history, replacing all the lead pipes and service lines in America. 10 million homes are still serviced with lead pipes. There are 400,000 schools and daycare centers with lead pipes. We're gonna replace them all and keep our children safe. How are you gonna pay for your plan? I'm gonna make sure the wealthy and corporations pay their fair share. Right now you have over 50 corporations, the Fortune 500 corporations don't pay a single penny in taxes. Let's just get back to a tax system that's fair and decent treats people with respect. Okay, guys. Chuck Schumer is under intense pressure right now to advance both of President Joe Biden's domestic spending packages in the next coming weeks. The infrastructure plan and a separate $3.5 trillion Democrats-only budget resolution. President Biden visited Senate Democrats on Capitol Hill on Wednesday to pitch the two-track plan, and he pledged that if they could pass the bills, he would sell them to the public. But Chuck Schumer's surprise announcement that he would hold a vote this coming week spooked key Republicans, who balked at the idea of being asked to vote in favor of a placeholder bill before they know what the final infrastructure legislation contains. Republican Senator Mitt Romney, a member of the coalition, had stated 
I will not be voting for a bill that isn't drafted yet, so we will have to draft as soon as we can, and that will mean resolving the issues that are outstanding. Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, another Republican in the group, said that Chuck Schumer's deadline meant that the group has a lot of work to do. Murkowski said after a meeting on Thursday between the White House negotiators and key senators, the good news, bad news is we've got a pretty tight time frame. Yet even with all the time in the world, it's difficult to see how the proposed offsets can be made up to add up to the $579 billion in new spending that senators in the White House agreed to in late June. Many experts say that the proposed ways to pay for the package in the working list are optimistic at best and are, at worst, smoke and mirrors. One such item is a proposed $100 billion in offsets to the cost from public-private partnerships and bonds from an infrastructure bank. This $100 billion represents nearly 20% of the total offsets. But despite scant details released so far, economists say these kinds of public-private partnerships are not designed to bring in revenue. And if anything, they typically cost the government money. Traditionally, public-private partnerships use government money in order to attract private funds to projects that might not otherwise be a good investment if the entire cost was being borne by private investors. Another key source of revenue in the original framework is enhanced internal revenue service enforcement, or closing the so-called tax gap. Estimates vary widely as to how much money the IRS would actually collect if the agency audited more taxpayers and cracked down on underpayment. In the original bipartisan framework, a $40 billion increase to the IRS's enforcement budget is projected to return an additional $140 billion in unpaid taxes for a net gain of $100 billion. But practically, as soon as the tax gap plan was announced, conservative groups like the Americans for Tax Reform began pressuring Republican senators to reject any increase in funding for the IRS. So what are your thoughts on this, everyone? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Chuck Schumer announced that he wants to hold a vote next week to continue the legislative process on infrastructure, a goal complicated by the fact that no legislative text yet exists. Jen Psaki said President Biden was willing to do whatever it will take to help moving the bills closer to a final passage. And I truly hope that our lawmakers come to an agreement on the infrastructure bill as soon as possible. So everyone, that is the end of the video for this afternoon. Thank you so much everyone for being here today and watching my video. I greatly appreciate it. Remember that next Friday, I will be announcing more winners of the $75 Amazon gift card giveaway. You can enter the giveaway by subscribing to my channel, leaving a comment below, and also liking this video. Thank you so much everyone and have a very blessed Saturday.